All right, this video is going to be a little different for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's absolutely no script, which isn't really new, but it has been a while. So bear with me. Also, we're taking a break from video editing. We're not going to be talking about DaVinci Resolve. We're not going to be talking about video editing at all. Instead, I'm going to answer a question that a lot of you guys have asked me, but I have never really gone into detail about. And that question is... How is your live stream stuff set up? And for a while, there was really nothing to write home about. I had my Canon SL2. We had a USB cable going into the computer from the camera, ran through the OBS, not OBS. We had it run through the webcam utility software into OBS and that was it. Camera, cable, computer, done. Recently though, that's changed a little bit. I just picked up the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and I wanted to use that as a webcam. So along with the camera, I picked up a whole bunch bunch of goodies like a, a monitor and also the Atom Mini also from Blackmagic Design and that's actually going to be the focus of this video because I use this to run my live stream off of a single source and a single scene in OBS. It's actually really, really cool. But before we dive into exactly how I do that, let's take a little tour of the Atom Mini. So the Atom Mini is a four channel broadcast mixer. So I have space for four different video inputs. Right now I'm only using two of them. Video one is my camera. So I've got my microphone running via XLR into the camera and then all of that is coming over to the Ada Mini through HDMI. It's one signal, which is great because now there's zero latency between audio and video when I'm doing my live stream. It's also great because I no longer have to record external audio when I'm making my videos. It's wonderful. Video two is my computer. So I've got an HDMI cable going out of the back of the computer into the Ada Mini so I can switch back and forth between what you're seeing now, the camera and my computer. And then I've got another HDMI cable running out of the Atom Mini into the back of my little Feel World monitor, which sits right here on my desk. This is how I make sure I'm in focus, make sure I'm in frame, all of that good stuff. And then I've got a USB-C cable coming out of the back of the Atom Mini into my computer. And that's how I can run it all through my computer and into OBS and use it as a webcam. And then things that aren't in use right now, we've got two more video sources. We've got two 3.5 millimeter microphone jacks. And then we've also got an ethernet port. So I could, if I wanted, connect to a network, get more switchers involved, more cameras, just make it a party. But like I said, those aren't being used right now. On the top of this switcher are a whole bunch of buttons. We've got the audio controls for the 3.5 millimeter microphone jacks. We've got the audio controls for all of the video sources. So right now, like I said, we're using the audio from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So that is activated right now. And I got this AFV button here and that I wanted to point out because that stands for audio follows video. So if I had this set up, and I had audio coming into all of my video sources, I could actually make it so that when I switch cameras, I also switch audio sources. Right now, I have it so no matter which video source I'm using, you're always hearing audio one. We've also got still and black buttons, and what that will do is if I hit the still button, Right here, you'll see it fades into a still. This is the still that I use at the beginning of all my live streams. Then I can hit camera one and it'll fade back to me. If I do black, it'll fade to black. Hit camera one, it'll come back to me. We've also got picture in picture. So let's say I'm doing a live video editing training, which is something that I do monthly for my channel members. By the way, if you haven't signed up for that, Links below, you should definitely check that out. But let's say I'm doing one of those live editing trainings. What I can do is switch over to my computer and then I can decide where I want me to show up. So I like bottom left, that's typically where I go. But in this case, we'll go bottom right because there's nothing on the screen and I can go ahead and hit on and I'll show up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. We've also got key on and off, which will make it so if you're working with green screen, it'll activate and deactivate that key. You can set all that up in the Atom software control, which we'll dive into in just a second. And then below that, we've got all of our transitions. And there's a good amount of transitions that you can do with the Atom Mini. First of all, you can set the duration of your transition. So we've got half a second, one second, one and a half seconds, and two seconds. And then we've got the types of transitions. So we've got a couple wipes. So let's go ahead and check that out. We've got a wipe 
and then we've got a top down wipe and then we've got a push and DVE which is more like a squeeze and then we've got mix which is more like a crossfade and then we've got dip which will dip to white and come back. Now in order to have these transitions activated we need to have auto selected. If I do cut and I change different sources then there'll be no transition. It'll just it'll just cut. And then finally fade to black will do exactly that. It'll fade to black and it'll actually stay at black until I hit fade to black again and then it'll come back up. By the way, I know that the color is different between what you're seeing now and what you're seeing when I'm pressing the buttons on the Atom Mini. I apologize for that. That's all being recorded with OBS, so there you go. But that's pretty much it for the Atom Mini. The real magic here is in the Atom software control because that combined with the Atom Mini lets you do a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Atom software control, we're starting in the switcher tab, which is basically just a virtual Atom Mini with a, a couple other buttons. There are a couple other functions that I don't really mess with because I like pressing the buttons. Big surprise there. But there are some really cool things that you can do with this virtual mixer. What I really like is manual transitions. So what I can do, let's say I'm on camera one right now, which I am, and I want to go to camera two, I can set camera two up in preview. And then when I go ahead and start sliding this, I start dipping to white and then I come back in on the screen recording. And what I can do is I can actually go ahead and change that to mix. And now we've got our little crossfade going on and we can do a wipe as well. And then we've also got fade to black over here. Same thing, click it, it'll fade to black and click it again, it'll fade back in. Over here on the right hand side, there's a couple different things that palettes and output we're not really gonna mess with. I never touch them when I'm doing my live stream because one, I don't use green screen and two, I don't ever capture anything directly from the software control. So we're gonna focus on the media player and this is where we can choose our stills. So right now we've got still one, start streaming soon. If I go ahead and press the still button on the Ada Mini, it'll cut to stream starting soon. But if I come back to camera one and I choose still two, thanks for watching, hit that still button again. Now you've got your thanks for watching frame. All right, let's move on to the media tab. This is where we can get our stills into the software so we can use them with the Ada Mini and it's super easy. We've got our local library browser here. So I just navigate to the folder where my stills are kept. Any PNG or JPEG files will show up down here in this bottom section. And then I can just drag and drop them to the still section. And then when I'm back in the switcher, I can go ahead, hit that drop down box and choose whatever still I want to transition to when I hit that still button. Moving on to audio, audio is really cool. This actually is basically a replica of the mixer in DaVinci Resolve Fairlight. So I've got my equalizer so I can EQ right here and make it sound like it does in my videos, which is really nice. And then I also have dynamic so I can do expander or gate or compressor, which is really nice. And that's way too much. Let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit and we can it's just that the same exact thing as in DaVinci Resolve. Finally, let's move on to camera control. Now you see I've got four sections here, one for each camera. It'll tell me which camera is currently live. So right now, camera one, the 6K, that's the live one. Now if I hit expand, actually before we hit expand, let's take a look. We've got a color wheel here for lift, gamma, and gain. And if I mess around with that, Let's say I can drag a whole bunch of teal into the shadows, which is really nice. And let's see, we go to gamma and we can push some yellow into the gamma and we can go ahead and hit gain and we can move our gain up towards orange. And that looks really, really bad. This isn't necessarily meant to give you a full grade. You can do this as like color. I can do basic color correction here. I can also expose down here. I can zoom and I can do autofocus. And the autofocus is great because 
The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K doesn't have continuous autofocus. It has one touch. So I hit that autofocus button while I'm sitting in my chair and I can use the monitor to make sure that it worked correctly, but that thing works to put me in focus for my live streams. And I even hook all of this up for when I film my videos so I don't have to continuously adjust the focus and make sure that everything's right. I can just sit down, hit that autofocus button and be good to go. Now, if I expand this section here, you can see we now have lift gamma and gain wheels. I can adjust the luminosity of each. I can adjust the contrast of the overall image, the saturation of the overall image, the hue and the RGB. So let's go ahead and we can reset our camera wheels and I can just add a little bit of saturation maybe a teensy tiny bit of contrast bring up my gamma just a little bit and we're we're good to go and that's pretty much it for the Atom stuff. After that, it's just a matter of getting into OBS. But actually, one thing that I do wanna mention is all of this happens before OBS. All of the, the audio tweaks and the color correction and all of that happens before OBS, which is super important because the filters, the audio filters and any of the video filters I, I don't like them. I don't like the ones in OBS and having to use them with the, the SL2 is just absolutely horrible. This way I can use tools that I'm used to to get the look that I want for my streams and then all I have to do in OBS is set up my source and go. So let me show you what that looks like. We can go ahead, minimize that. Now we're in OBS and we've got we've got our scene here so this is the only scene that i use right now so what i can do is come over to the atom software control let's go over to the switcher tab let's make sure that still one is set up and what i can do is go to obs and let's say we're streaming through obs and what i can do here is i can start off with stream starting soon and people are there and I can turn the audio off so people can't hear me. And then when it's time to start the stream, I can fade. That didn't work. Let's try it again. So am I still time to start the stream? I hit fade and we do the thing. And sometime while I'm streaming, I come over here and I change my still to thanks for watching. And when it's time to end the stream, I say, thanks for watching, love you to death, blah, 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 blah. And I hit the still button again and it fades to the thanks for watching frame. And that's it. I don't have to switch sources or scenes or anything. It all just works. I, I absolutely love it. So yeah, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, the Ada Mini, the software control, the monitor, all of it works together to give me a really, really easy way to manage my live streams and i could even set up my sl2 as a b cam if i wanted to and i could have multi-angled streams which is absolutely incredible now look i know this isn't the type of video that you're used to seeing from me but if by chance you want to see more stuff like this about my setup about my studio and how i make videos make sure you leave a comment down below and, and let me know. In the meantime, in case you missed it, DaVinci Resolve 17 just came out and it's absolutely amazing. To learn more about that, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.